Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome back. So in this tutorial we will learn how can we make our code efficient using vectorization technique. Okay. Okay. So today's agenda is that uh, we will learn about vectorization and how vectorization is important in machine learning and also we will look at the demo on Jupyter Notebook about the performance comparison between uh, vectorized and unvectorized implementation. And also if some of you like to read stuff, I'm also writing an article on it on my Medium account. So you can also refer to this for a step-by-step -step guide. And source code which we will use in the demo will also be available on my github account and obviously all the relevant details will be available on the description below okay so let's start our presentation so what is vectorization now, it is a technique to make your code execute fast but the question is how so i have written here two points uh, no need to explicitly use loops and use highly optimized numerical linear algebra libraries. So what does that mean? So in our uh, program when we are learning about machine learning and implementing that stuff uh, many times loops are needed and uh, in image processing for mat matrix multiplication we need to use loops so instead of using loops explicitly, what we could do is we can use highly optimized libraries uh, in Python or in C, C++, in Java, etc. And often these libraries are developed by people who have uh, PhDs in uh, numerical computing. They are very specialized people, as said by Professor Andrew Ang. So this is a concept when I learned when I was uh, uh, completing a course on machine learning from course era uh, taught by Professor Andrew Wang. So vectorization in machine learning. So in machine learning, we uh, learn about supervised and unsupervised stuff. And uh, in supervised, we have uh, regression problems, classification problems. And in both of these, we need to deal with the optimization stuff for example in regression problem uh, to get started with you learn a linear regression stuff and in that you need to learn about uh, optimization algorithm and uh, what it does is it tries to get those efficient parameters for our model for our linear model so that we can predict on it uh, with a minimum amount of error so here this is what it means makes conversion fast now it seems to be quite boring but now it won't seem to be boring so here we are looking at an example of linear regression and uh, how this is a visualization of how gradient descent works so here we can see that this red line or a linear model is trying to get fit into this data with the best possible parameter it can get using gradient descent so here we can see the changes in the uh, parameter of this x feature so this is a one feature model okay now vectorized versus unvectorized now here we can see a very beautiful simple mathematical function linear function which is summing up these terms till n times now if we want to implement this function we have two ways to do this the traditional way is that we could have used the for loop or while loop etc and uh, the second way is vectorization so let's see how we can do this okay so for example we have 
n equals to 3 we have let's say n features which is uh, three features and this is how you will extract the terms out of this function on the right okay i am representing theta by capital o because i we don't have theta variable in uh, in keyboard okay let's give it uh, make a vector of uh, 3 by 1 so let's give it 25 uh, 10 20 okay and let's give our features x as uh, mm, I don't know so 3 9 or 18 right now here we can see that that 3 this theta is a vector of 3 by 1 dimension okay theta dimension and x is also a vector of uh, is x 3 by 1 dimension which is also known as x a feature vector so in vectorization what we can do is we can took uh, we can take a transpose of any one of them let's take a transpose of theta and let me write it as this theta x in this so now our dimension would be for theta transpose 1 into 3 and uh, for x it would be same and here the magic happens here we can see we can compute this operation using the dot product of theta and by theta transpose and x feature right and then we can get our final answer as one by one result. Okay, let's look at it. Let's quickly look at it. Okay, demo time. Let's get started. <laughs> okay, we are here. We have generated some random numbers for theta and x. Okay. Here I am using n equals to 10,000 features. We will also change this number. We will also change this number. Don't worry about it. So this function is uh, generating num random numbers between 0 and 1. Then this ran in function generates numbers between 0 and 100. And there are n numbers where it generates, right? So it will generate a number between 0 and we can also change this thing stuff. So this is just a generating random stuff, random number stuff. Okay, so this is one of the way using for loop in Python. This is one of the ways of using for loop. Here it is. Uh, it will run n times, and will add all the terms in this variable prediction. Here we have made a unvectorized function, and there are three parameters: theta, x, and n simple enough and just ignore this print result for a while because we will do a live demo so we don't need this now, this is a vectorized implementation now here we can see that in vectorized we have the uh, theta transpose and the second parameter is x now we are using the numpy library which is a highly numerical optimized numerical computing library in python so using the dot product this is how you do the dot product using numpy np dot dot function and then you pass these two parameters in it right simple enough and i named the function as vectorize to get things simpler enough to understand now here it is comparing performance now we will quickly jump back to our demo part where is the Jupyter notebook here it is okay so here we are what we are interested in if I just run this code okay it says NP is not defined why because I need to 
first run this import library now let me run this okay okay so here it generated the 10,000 number features okay and it is giving us the result of this so let's verify the result using vectorize so the, see the we have got the same result using for loop using unvectorize and using vectorize implementation now let's compare it now this is how we compare compare the performance using the time it function which is a magical function in uh, Jupyter notebook python which gives us the time information about a method or a piece of code so here it took 7.12 millisecond uh, at the mean time per loop for an unvectorized let's see what it does for let's see quickly it does quickly enough for vectorized 19.9 .9 microsecond which is very less amount of time than this millisecond sorry right now let's change this features let take it as a hundred okay no one worry about this we can also change this number as 50 whatever and let's now do that. now let me just show you the values as well so see there are hundred uh, values in it and if i show you the dimension as well see we have the 10 by uh, oh, sorry 100 by 1 vector okay so using uh, unvectorized we got this answer and using vectorized we got this answer which is same obviously now here we see that using unvectorized it took 74.2 microsecond and using vectorized 2.57 so vectorization is a very efficient way to deal this stuff. So this was it for the tutorial. And thank you very much for watching this. See you in the next tutorial. These are a couple of references. And all the relevant details will be available in the description. Stay safe. Bye-bye.